In 2009, more than 20 of the country's top sommeliers competed to be crowned the best sommelier in America. Held in New York City every other year by the American Sommelier Association, the winner earns the right to the prestigious national title. But it is a grueling climb. Very strong competition. There's two master sommeliers that are competing. Lots of experience, so, you know, you have to uh, just be humble and see what happens. First, a brutal written exam. It's great to get out of bed to, to see what it is you don't know and how much you've forgotten. Agonizing, excruciating even. It's always humbling. <laughs> the upside, I think I answered some things correctly. <laughs> it's always the upside, right? Then, American Sommelier Association President Andrew Bell test the candidates with blind tasting and food pairing. So if someone ordered this product, what would you serve with it and why? Everyone have one? One dish with a multitude of ingredients. This is about the, the relationship between the ingredients of the product and the two products we've given you to taste. Uh, reddish, a little bit of purple, Briary notes. Uh, almost like a cherry pie on a mode or a, a root beer float. More tests. Tell us please the names of those bottles on your left. Uh, of course. And could you please discuss with us any botrytized wines? And if wines. you could identify or discuss with us some botrytized wines. discuss any botrytized wines from Italy? Botrytized wines from Italy. Wine decanting and service. 1982 Chateau Margaux. How would you compare this to the 83 Margaux? How would you compare this one to an 83 Margaux? So how do you think this compares with the 1983? How do you compare this to an 83 Margaux? 1983 is actually a very good vintage for Margaux. The long first day is finally at an end. It's time for a little relaxation with Pomeray Cuvée Louise. Tomorrow, the field will be narrowed. Once these numbers are announced, everybody's back at zero. On the morning of day two, the four finalists are announced. 2-1-1. Next up was 2-4-0. They will go head to head for the right to be called the best sommelier in America. And uh, the highest in the semifinals was 246. While the finalists wait their turn, an imaginary restaurant has been set up where they will be put to the test. I started working for my father in a restaurant cooking uh, since I was a teenager. I like the way my, the boxes open up in my head every time I put my nose in a glass of wine. A lot of memories open up with that too. Here's your dining room. Yeah, I'm ready. ready. This is going to be amazing industry. The people are passionate. I love food and wine. Uh, I come from a restaurant background. We have four wines, four spirits, and 16 minutes. You know, the thing about wine is, no matter how much you love it, you can never know everything there is to know. Why do I love wine? I'm ready. Okay. My opinion, wine bring people together. A common passion. Viscosity well, seems moderate. Plus. Flintiness of like a dusty chalk, earth component. Three to five years old. Piedmont, Nebbiolo, uh, also thought of lighter skin, so a Pinot Noir. But the first wine is a clear white wine of a medium concentration. Of a magenta pink, watery meniscus of about a quarter of an a inch. A medium showing minus pink. concentration. It is bright, coming with a light risotto on the side, risotto with a bit of shellfish in it. The contest has many hurdles. Cove Alexander should be Malbec, not Pinot. An erroneous wine list. You've chosen a tasting menu for this evening? Pairing food and wine. Uh, the pan-seared sweetbread with green asparagus salads and ramp pesto. Start off with something quite light. I would say go straight to Argentina. 
and do a very big Malbec. Champagne service. Ready to make special occasion? Just for afternoon champagne. Okay, champagne sounds great. Well, I highly recommend the 19 bear that's coming from England actually, and it's pretty fantastic. Decanting. Welcome to the restaurant. You ordered a great bottle of wine. Do you remember how many points this wine had? Do you know the actual origin of this wine? Do you know who the winemaker was at the very beginning? Just want to make sure the wine is clean. And a few surprises. My grandfather recently passed away, and I inherited his cellar. And I was wondering if you could tell me what these are. I have no idea, and uh, they were all buried in the basement. You have seven minutes. Delicious Agrigitico, or St. George, found in Greece. Azurtico is a uh, red grape from uh, Greece. Uh, Cereza is a red from uh, Slovenia. The Afandla is from Austria. It's a white grape. And in addition to knowledge, a little charm can't hurt. Some more champagne, gentlemen. Oh, you never ask. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. We do not want to leave that bottle in the ice bucket. American Sommelier Association President Andrew Bell has one more challenge up his sleeve. The object of this epreuve is pour champagne evenly in all glasses, one pour per glass. The last test is cigar service. Any preference, Calvados, Armagnac? Then, the final scores are tallied. The winners are announced at a gala dinner. The runners up take the stage, and then. 2009, best song in America, Michael.